in the name of Jesus. That yes. the name is above all names. That in the name of Jesus, every demon has to bow his name. Yes. yes. The Lord, we thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Yes. Yes. Show us your glory this morning, oh God. Touch every life, meet every need, Lord. Let no one leave the way they came. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for it belongs to you. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Tell that person next to you, you're going to be blessed today. You're going to be blessed today. You're going to be blessed today. I like that. Now, if I was pastoring, I would probably take about three or four services to share this, but I'm, I'm, I don't have that luxury, so I'm going to teach, preach this to you. And um, what I encourage you to do is take notes and read the scriptures later, because when you teach, preach, you can't read every scripture. You know, when you, when you teach, you go line upon line, you read every scripture. When you teach, preach, you tell people where it's at, you expect them to write it down and look it up later. Yeah. Plus, we're, we're, we're live streaming, I'll get it. We'll, we'll, my wife will get it on YouTube probably between now and tomorrow. And you can access that through our website, www.etm.org. You go to uh, resources, sermons, and then you click on it, it goes to all the uh, YouTube uh, videos that we have on there. That'll be on there. And also, yes. Brother Al, we are. Uh, taping it too, we, we see these. Okay. So if you like to copy this message so you can go back over it again, be sure to put in a, 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 a request in the box back there on the back and uh, your name and we'll, we'll get you a copy. There we go. Because this is a word in season. This is a, this is a timely word. Amen. You know, the Bible says God does nothing on the earth unless he first reveals it to his prophets. That's found in, in, in the... Uh, in uh, Micah, the, the third chapter. I want you to turn with me to Matthew, the 24th chapter. I want to talk to you about the coming restoration. Now, I've been in the ministry 39 years. Uh, over 30 years, 30 some years, I've been teaching eschatology, which includes the coming of the Lord. And I have always been convinced that we are the generation that will see the coming of the Lord. Nobody knows the day of the hour. Yes. But Jesus said there would be a generation when we would see all these things fulfilled that would not pass over, that would not die unto all these things be fulfilled, which would be the coming of the Lord, the, tri the tribulation period, and the return of Jesus Christ to establish his millennium reign. Yes. I believe that we're that generation. Amen. Uh, and seeing what's going on in the last six, seven months tells me that he's coming back very, very soon. Every, every prophecy that needs to be fulfilled, with the exception of one, which is the one I'm going to share with you now, has been fulfilled. That's how close it is. Once you see what I'm going to share with you happening, and it's already beginning to happen, but it hasn't come to fruition yet, the fullness of it yet. Uh, it's, it's right around the corner, okay? And so in Matthew, the 24th chapter, Jesus said this, and, and I'll, I'll go over quickly over some of the signs so that you are, are, are aware of them. In verse 32, he says, Now learn this parable from the fig tree. Now the fig tree represents Israel. And the scriptures there are Joel, the, the first chapter, verse 7. Jeremiah 24 and Hosea 9:10 all reveal to us that the that Bible refers to Israel as the fig tree. So he says, learn this matter from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. In other words, when, when you see Israel blossom, you know that this is near. Now, Israel blossomed in May 14, 1948. That's when they became the nation. They were recognized by our, our, our uh, United States of America and, and uh, the United Nations as the nation of Israel, okay? Uh, they blossom. So Jesus says, so you also, when you see all these things, now underline the word all in your Bible, all these things, know that it is near at the door. Because, you know, uh, people always say, well, there's always been wars, rumors of wars. Yeah, but Israel has become a nation. We're the only generation that's seen that happen. Yes. So all these signs coming together, it's what points to the fact that he is right around the corner. Yes. And he says, Surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. So they're not going to die. Now, how long is the generation? Well, if we go by the Bible and uh, Psalm 90, okay, Moses was complaining to God that the, the, the children of Israel were dying at 70. He said, If they're real strong, they last at 80. And if you go to Hebrews, the third chapter, God calls them an evil generation. Amen. So a generation is somewhere between 70 and 80 years. 80 years, amen. Now it says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not by no means pass away. But of the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So we cannot pinpoint to a day and hour. 
But we can pinpoint it to the generation that's alive. Yes. Amen. Amen. So if somebody comes out with another dumb book, you know, like the guy in 1988 came out with a book, 88 Reasons Why Jesus Comes Back in 1988, <laughs> and a bunch of dumb Christians bought his book because they haven't read the Bible, and he made a lot of money. When it wasn't fulfilled, he wrote another one. And he and I made some more money. Hello. <laughs> Yeah. You know, nobody can pinpoint the day of the hour. Don't follow these ding dinglings I mean, that are putting dates when she's come back. Nobody knows the exact date. But we do know that we are the generation. Yeah. And we better be prepared. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because you do not want to be left behind. What's happening now is the beginning of birth pangs. That's what the Bible calls Yes, it. that's right. The beginning of labor pangs. You know, when a woman goes into labor, I, I, I never have gone into labor, but I've been there when my kids were born. And, you know, in the beginning, a woman can handle the pain. She can even take herself to the hospital if need be. But I'm going to tell you, that, as that child become, comes closer, those pains become unbearable. Amen. And I've been in the delivery room and heard women in other delivery rooms going, cut me, cut me, take it out, no more kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> and they do it all over here. God bless them. <laughs> and that's what we're seeing right now, the beginning. This is the beginning of birth pain. So if you think this is bad, this coronavirus, what do you think is going to happen when the tribulation period comes? Right. Amen. You don't want to be here for that event. And God doesn't Amen. want you to be here. That's right. He wants you to escape the things that are coming on this earth. Yes. Amen. 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 That's what the Bible says. Yes. And I don't plan on being here. That's right. I'm on the first Holy Ghost flight out. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Because there will be other raptures. Amen. There will be other raptures. Unfortunately, some people are going to be left behind. And if you read Revelation the seventh chapter, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the, the elders says to John, uh, who are these people that, that uh, you know, that come out of the Great Tribulation? The Great Tribulation is the second part of the Tribulation, where the mark of the beast is implemented, where the Antichrist uh, goes into the temple, declares he's God, which is called the abomination of desolation, found in the book of Daniel, in Matthew 24. That's the worst part of the Tribulation. Yes. And they come out of the Great Tribulation, so they went through at least more than half of the Tribulation period, but God brought them out because they washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. So that means that they, they were they were they were born again, but they had sin in their life. They didn't deal with it. Didn't that a time they didn't mess around with sin? And and they are Christians. I've been to some churches lately where you got people that are homosexual singing in the group in the group. Hello? Uh -huh. People shocked up in, in the church. There's something wrong with that with that uh, scenario. Hello? Something wrong with that scenario. And something wrong with the message that are being preached. Because I'm gonna tell you something. When you preach the gospel, people should either repent. And get right with God or run out the door. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah. Then this, you know, this nice quote, what he was talking about before, it, is, it came out of Joseph Prince with this grace message. And then once saved, no one's saved. God, God will never punish you for your sins. You, you don't have to repent because that's written to the, not the agnostics and the, the epistle of John. That's heresy. Yes. And people want to hear that because they have itching ears. Amen. Yep. Go ahead. Because nobody wants to do the word because it's work to do the word. Uh -huh. You ever notice James 1, 21 through 27? Yes. It says be a doer of the word. Yes. And then it goes, it's a doer of the work that's blessed. Why does it change the terminology when it's talking about the same thing? Because it's work to do the word. Yes. Amen. Amen. I mean, you got to crucify your flesh. That's right. Your flesh don't want to come to church. Your flesh don't want to do the things of God. That's right. Go you got to put your flesh down and say, no, you're going to do the Lord. And the more that you put, put your flesh down by obeying God's word and yielding to the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, amen, you'll strengthen your spirit, man. The reason some people are so carnal, they're always yielding to the flesh. Yep. Go ahead. Down, go ahead, brother. That's good. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. I said some like, sure, you don't want to call shit anything. <laughs> now, he says, Verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so will also be the coming of the Son of Man. So one of the things that he says, one of the signs is the, the days of, uh, of Noah. How was the days of Noah? Look at Genesis 6 and hope you place it in Matthew. What was prevalent about the days of Noah? Well, it says this, this. Verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Verse 12. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. So the earth was filled with violence. Mm -hmm. Is the earth filled with violence today? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is the, the Living Bible. It says, Meanwhile, the crime rate was rising rapidly across the earth, and as seen by God, the world was rotten to the core. Uh -huh. Amen. That's the way the world is now. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to Jesus coming back when we get out of here, because I can't yes. see this world. It is ugly. You know, I'm going to be six, seven years old next month. And thank you, sister. I think we live just to sit. I think about 40. 
I'm thinking, my son's 41, but I'm a little old. But. The Amplified Bible says, the earth was depraved and putrid in God's sight. The land was filled with violence, desecration, infringement, outrage, assault, and loss and lust for power. Isn't that the... Yes. What we're seeing in the political realm in America is a lesser power. Yep, that's what it These is. people on, on, on the left, they don't care about America. They yeah. care about staying in power. Mm -hmm. that's right. Go ahead. And thank God we have a, a godly president. I get so tired of Christians criticizing our president. You need to pray for him. Is he perfect? No. But he's doing the right thing for the church, for God, for our country. It really annoys me when I, when I see Christians. They're being used uh, by the devil. Amen. 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 And they make up all these lies about it. Yeah. Amen. Anyway, that's another subject for another time. And it says, verse 30, And then not known until the flood came and, and took them all away, so also it will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other one left. Two men will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, the other one left. That's, that's the rapture. Mm -hmm. Watch therefore, for you then know what hour our Lord is coming. In other words, stay spiritually alert. We need to be like the sons of Issachar in First Chronicles 12, 30, uh, 12 to 32, where they, they, they had an understanding of the times, amen? And that's what God wants to get across to you, the understanding of the times. What time are you living, amen? Yes. And so, Paul also uh, spoke prophetically about, about this hour over there in, in 2 Timothy, the third chapter. 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verse 1 through 5. He says this. Know this, and in the last days, perilous time will come. Amen? We've, we've gone to a point now where pastors have to bring in, uh, their, their weapons to church to protect the sheep. Yeah. Hello? That's yeah. the thing we're living in. Absolutely. Because, I mean, it's a, it's a given that people have come into a church trying to shoot up the church and kill people. They've done it. And so pastors are starting to pack now. I don't blame them. Amen? <laughs> I don't blame them. It'd be a big mistake to come to this church. I'm right now. Right in there. Yeah. And that's a big one, too. A big old pea shooter. That's the day that we're living in. You know, well, uh, I thought you were a man of faith. I am. Peter walked with Jesus. He carried a sword. And when Jesus went up, was going to go to heaven, he said to his disciples, Now, if you don't own a sword, go buy one. Sell your cloak and buy one. A cloak was a very. A necessity. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in, in, the, in the desert. It's yes. hot during the day, but cold at night. It kept them warm. Yes. And he put such a great end. He said, sell your cloak and buy one. If, it, if he was living today, he said, go buy yourself a, a nine millimeter. Or, you know, so, <laughs> they, they were short back then. This is the day that we're living in, folks. You know, we can't be so spiritual that we're no earthly good. Well, yeah. There's a balance between the spirit and, you know, I believe in divine healing, but I also believe in exercise and eating right. Yes. And taking vitamins. That's Go a ahead, for another time. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So he says, verse 2, For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, blau, uh, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despised the good, traded, headstrong, hoarding, lovers of pleasure, brother and lovers of God. Don't, th doesn't that describe our society? Yes, sir. Today? Go ahead. And he, he, here's the other one. Having a form of godliness but denying his power from such people turn away. That's right. So we have religion today. That's right. Religion. Right. Religion has no power. It can't Board change power. your life. Power. Listen, to, right. to go to church just to, to appease your religious conscience is a waste of your time. That's right. Yeah. Amen. If you think you're going to have it because you went to church, you're going to have a rude awakening. Yes. Amen. When you, when you pass from this life. Yes. Because religion doesn't save you. I know that. I was Catholic, you know, way back as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't saved. And thank God God had mercy on me. Yes. I, I was stationed there with the 82nd Airborne Division. I had, I had 24 jumps out of my, under my belt. I had a C-130, uh, C-141, helicopters. Amen. And they used to pack your shoes back then. I don't know if they still do. But the guy that packed the shoes could have been down drinking the night before and, hung, and got hung over and didn't pack it. <laughs> yeah. And then I was a police officer. Amen. Uh, when I came out. And, and I, I worked on comics, and I worked with the government. And, and, and I, had, I had a contract put out on me and stuff. But, but God kept me. Yes, praise God. Me. Until I got saved. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Glory
Amen. 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 Man, I want the glory of God to come in this place and shake you until yeah. your false teeth fall out. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. We need that. We need to get yes. shaken. Holy Ghost yes. 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 Amen. Amen. We don't need another religious service. Go ahead, brother. Amen. Where it's dull and dry. No, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen, yeah. we need to preach the word, but we need to have manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And I said, come, Holy Ghost, have it. When yes. I, asked, I, told, I told the Lord, I said, you can mess in my part, part series anytime you want. Yes, to. yes. I'll be in the middle of the preaching. Somebody started laughing on the Holy Ghost over there. And somebody <laughs> over here, somebody, somebody fought on the power. And before you know it, was an uproar in the church. Holy Ghost, I just stand back like God do what he wants to do. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Have your mind Every Lord. way, Lord. When, when it fits it, but I just check with him. You want me to keep preaching? You want to do something else? <laughs> we need to have him in charge. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm doing. A lot of services. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. You want know, to want to control stuff and ask God the blessing. God's not going to bless your plans. That's right. You got to find out what his plans are. That's right. Amen. Right. 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 Jesus didn't do his own thing on his earth. He said, I'm going to do what the Father showed me to do. I'm going to do what the Father gives me to do. Amen. That's the problem with a lot of church services. That's right. control my man. Go ahead, no, man. You can't Go have ahead. church without God. That's right. Amen. 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 Church needs to be exciting. Every yes. service should be yes. different. Yes. 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 The gifts of Spirit should manifest yes. on a continual basis. Yes. Yes. Because God wants to manifest Himself. Yes. Yes. The Holy yes. Ghost wants to be a part of what's happening. Yes. 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 He, don't, he doesn't want to be left out. No. You know, there's a church in Laodicea that Jesus had a knock on the door. He was outside. He couldn't get into church. Because <laughs> they were lukewarm. Amen. Right. Go ahead. Although man. they were wealthy, they were rich, but they. There was no move of God. They wouldn't let him in in the church. Go Isn't ahead. that something? Go I ahead. saw some churches right there. They don't let the Holy Ghost come in. Go ahead. Oh, we don't want that wildfire here. You don't want to scare somebody. That's <laughs> 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 the blind leading the blind. Go ahead. <laughs> look at uh, Luke 17. Let's, let's look at some other, uh, some other signs here. Luke 17. Verse 28 through 30. It says, likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on that day, that Lot went out of Sodom and rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so it will be in the day when the Son of Man is real. What was prevalent about the days of Lot? Sexual perversion. Yes. Well, we are in the midst of such perversion. Yes. Hello? Yes. You, you, you got this guy, Epstein. Amen. You got a, a, an ex-president of the United States that went with him 26 times to his island where they were messing around with little children. That, that's, that, that's on the record, amen? I know he lied about it. He said he, he never he only went there once or whatever. It's on the log 26 times he went, amen? Uh, yes, I think it's perversion. I mean, perversion in, in, in the White House. We know Monica Lewinsky, amen? People don't even know what sin is. They, they think it's okay to go pick up somebody in the bar, go home, and take them home, go to bed with them. Go ahead, brother. Oh, that's perverted. And then, of course, we got the subject of homosexuality, and it doesn't stop there. And by the way, homosexuality is a sin. Yes. 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 It's an abomination in the eyes of God. Yes. The, according to the Bible, Romans 1, for a man and a man to have sex. It's not a marriage. God created Adam and, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Stephen. Amen. Amen. The Supreme Court here in the United States said we have gotten it wrong. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, God doesn't hate the homosexual. That's right. Are you following? Because God loves the sinner. Mm -hmm. But he hates the sin. That's right. So we, we don't hate homosexual, but we can't approve of what they do. And, and the thing is, that we got people today that are supposed to be in ministry that are putting their stamp of approval, even marrying these kind of people. Yep. Go ahead, brother. Oh, that's an abomination. Yes. I just, I just read yesterday that uh, this uh, pastor of an Episcopalian church was put as, uh, as the president of this uh, abortion uh, uh, organization. Forget oh, wow. the name of these things. Imagine that. Yeah. But see, that's, that's part of the other time, the apostasy. Yes, yes. We're seeing that happening. Yes. Amen. Even in word of faith circles. <clears throat> Go ahead. There's a guy named Marcus Bishop. He ran around with Trevor Dollar, with Leroy Thompson, all, all over the place preaching the gospel. He's following uh, Hinduism now. And, it's, and he, he, he did an interview. You go online and read it. Amen. I, I watched the interview on Channel 7 in Florida some years back where he says, the things that I used to teach don't resonate with me anymore. I've been on a spiritual journey. Well, I still believe in Jesus, but I follow Hinduism. He's following some dead yogi that died in 2004 or something like 90 something years old. Then you got word of faith, well known. Amen. Then, then you got Carlton Pearson who passed in a church out in Oklahoma. I, I 
What son? Is it, I heard him preach. Fourth generational uh, holiness preaching. Amen. I heard him say when he got married, he's a virgin. And that's that's commendable. But today he teaches universalism. Where everybody gets saved and they get the fact they the devil. Mm -hmm. He can go online. This is this is not gossip. This this is this is recorded. This is yes, it's fact. And the, the thing is, see, uh, people don't want to mention it. Well, what are supposed to judge? No, Jesus didn't say don't judge. He said judge righteous judgment. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And Paul made names. Why did he do that? To warn the people not to follow these That's people. Right. That's, That's right. the reason people get deceived because nobody wants to mention. Well, I, just, I want to walk in love. <laughs> but Tom Bentley was having a pseudo revival down in Florida. Uh -huh. I, I exposed them. Go ahead. Uh, I, had, I had people that came to me Go and wanted to argue and fight with me. I remember people in ministry. Yeah. Then so we're praying for you. You call them division on. Then I expose them what's wrong so that people don't follow false prophets. Go ahead. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. I can't understand these people that keep quiet. Go ahead. Oh, we're supposed to sound the alarm. That's we're right. We're supposed to protect the sheep. That's right. What kind of a pastor are you if you don't warn people? That's right, brother. Go what ahead. kind of a minister of the gospel? Right. Paul warned the people. Amen? Yes. He named names. Yes. I'm not talking about splitting hairs over minor doctrinal things. I'm talking about heresy. Yes. I'm talking about people that have been in sin. Amen? And ripping people off in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. <clears throat> so, oh, Solomon, the Lord was destroyed. Why? Sexual perversion, homosexuality, God destroyed it. Yes. I wonder if we're suffering some of the stuff that we're suffering because we've allowed all this stuff. Yeah. We've killed about 60, 60 million babies through abortion. Go ahead, brother. Amen. And then the highest court in our land put stamp of approval, pushed by the last president, amen, to push this homosexual agenda through. I wonder if we're suffering as a result of it, amen. God's allowing stuff to come to wake us up. Thank God people are starting to pray now. Yes. Sometimes that's what they say. I call it the school of hard knocks. Uh -huh. Amen. Sometimes people have to go through hard times so they humble themselves before God and start doing what they should be doing all along. Yes, go ahead. Now, I'll tell you something. If you don't want to lose the scripture, you better get on your knees and start praying. Yes. And I'm not talking about maybe can be prayer. I'm talking about praying in the Holy Ghost fervently. Yes. Yes. Because there's a war going on. Go ahead, brother. For the soul of America. That's right. Yes, go sir. ahead. That's right. Yes, sir. All right, so go over to uh, Luke, the 21st chapter. Some of the other signs that have taken place. Verse uh, 9 through 11. When you hear wars and commotions, do not be terrified. God does not want you to walk in fear. Listen to me. Fear opens the door to the devil. That's right. This is the whole thing with this corona thing. It's the fear that they're putting in people's hearts. Fear will cause... The, the, the door to open into your life for other demons to come and afflict you and even kill you. Yes. Well, yes. God's like, in your spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. Amen. When, when the corona thing came out, right away, the Lord said to me, I want you to deal with the spirit. And, and I have a message that's on our, our, our YouTube for confronting the coronavirus. And I'm telling right now, I, I'm not getting corona. I try. Right. Why? How can you be so bold? You take vaccine? Yeah, I got vaccinated with Psalm, with Psalm 89, 34, and Psalm 91. Psalm <laughs> <laughs> says, my covenant I will not break, not all the things that come out of my mouth. I try. I got a covenant with God. Thank God, yes. yes. And Amen. My covenant says in Psalm 91, no evil. If I go in the secret place of the Most High, and I'm abiding in the shadow of the Almighty, and I'm saying the right things about the Lord, it says, no evil shall be for you. Neither shall any plague come near you. Know? Right. Right. And God can't lie. No, yeah. So it right. ain't right. coming near me. It yeah. ain't coming near my wife. And That's I right. ain't right. coming near my family. That's right. Amen. And why? Amen. Because Job 21, 36 says, he will deliver the one whom you want to see because of the cleanliness of your hands. If you are living right for God, man, you can send the gap for your family, even those knuckleheads in your family, God will protect you. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hello? Lot was a no <laughs> yeah. And he got he got delivered from, from Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> yeah. Because why, why? Because Abraham was a friend of God. That's right. Abraham was righteous. Oh, he wasn't perfect. Amen. You don't have to be perfect. We're being perfected as a process. Yes. Abraham was not perfect. Can you give why your wife boy not once but twice <laughs> to save your skin? No <laughs> wonder Sarah Sarah, her name was, was called bitter. Contentious. That's what her name meant. Sarah. Uh -huh. 
And can you be married to a guy like that? <laughs> and because she was contentious, she couldn't have kids. Because if you're contentious, you don't respect your husband. How is God going to bless you? Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. That's why I just read the church. Go ahead. <laughs> That's another subject for another time. You see, God taught them faith and changed their names. Yes. Sarah means of noble character. She got to a place she called her husband Lord. Yes. <laughs> My wife doesn't call me Lord, but she does call me a specimen of a man. <laughs> she said, she's married to a fine specimen of a man. Isn't that right? I know it was. Isn't that right? My wife calls me that. They can attest to that. My son? <laughs> That's what it is. The true blessing is you're married to a fine specimen of a man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all right to have fun in church. Yeah. And enjoy the Lord is our strength, man. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Some people come to church, they look, they wash their face with grapefruit juice and margarine with lemon juice. Yeah. That, that guy's a big one. They want to one of them people of Jesus that way. No. You need a smile on your face. It's a joy. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. How do you get joy? Well, get in the river, glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. In the Greek means instability, disorder, confusion, commotion, tumult. Are we not saying that today? Yes. Oh, yeah. Do not be terrified. Look at the faces of the people when you go out in the world today to Walmart. And, and they are terrified. They are petrified. We went to Walmart a couple of times and, and we went to get some. Six feet, six feet, six feet. She's hacked. She's freaking out. I said, okay. <laughs> yeah, you feel sorry for them. Amen? Because they don't know Jesus. Amen? See, he'll bring peace into your life when you know him. Yes. But you can't know him by occasionally getting the word. you got to immerse yourself in this word. Yes. Let the word of God become That's a reality right. inside of you. Amen? Yes. And then you have a good relationship with God, a strong one. Amen. You will walk around in fear, petrified. Amen. That's right. Well, these things must come to pass, but the end will not come to meet them. In other words, the end of the world. Then he said, the nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes. Well, we're seeing that. Mm -hmm. yep. In various places, famines. We're seeing that. Pestilence. That's what we're, that's, this pandemic is pestilence. Uh, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. All right, so these, these are some of the other signs. Uh, here, here's another sign. Uh, look at the Luke 21. Luke 21, verse... 25 to 28. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars. Now, we've already seen some signs in the moon. There will be others during the tribulation period, but not too long ago we saw the four blood moons. I have a teaching on that on our YouTube channel and the significance of that. And on the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity. The, yes. the Greek word there, it means anguish and anxiety. Yes. That's what we're seeing right now. And the nation, with the sea and the waves roaring. What is that? Storms. Mm -hmm. I have a teaching on our YouTube channel, The Origin of Storms. They're demonic. Amen. Science has their explanation, but I'll tell you, I can prove in the Bible, they come, they're demon spirits. He's called the prince of the power of the air. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's created these storms. Amen. I know science has their explanation, and we don't criticize them because there is truth to what they're saying. But behind that is demon forces. Yes. Amen. I can prove that very clearly to you, very easily to you. In the book of Job, uh, Job had a hedge of protection around him. He broke that hedge because he was greatly developed in fear. Mm -hmm. Job 3.25 says, the things that I greatly feared have come upon me. That's right. He's afraid his kids had cursed him. His kids, his kids, they were not living for God. They were parties. I mean, they, they were having parties all the time because daddy's rich, you know, just rich, spoiled, rich kids, having parties. And he was afraid they may curse God. So he's offering, offering sacrifices in fear. Amen. And then his wife was ungodly. I mean, yep. He suffered all that, and then, he, then, then on top of that, he suffered a physical infirmity. And she goes, Why do you hold on to your trigger? Why don't you curse God and die? Yep. Yeah. I thought Mary's that witch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had a rough man. But he was blessed, but he broke down the hedge. And see, Ecclesiastes 10 8 says, If you break down the hedge, the serpent will bite you. That's right. We got a hedge of protection on it. You got to watch what you will come out of your mouth. Yeah, when you sin, this is why when Joseph Prince Boy. teaches, it's such a damnable heresy. To tell people you don't have to confess your sins that the epistle of John read to the agnostic is a damnable heresy that will damage your spiritual life and will open the door to the devil. Yes. 
In 1 Corinthians 11, 30 through 32, the Apostle Paul says to the Corinthian church, they, they had all the gifts of spirit operating, but they were the most carnal. Amen? All kinds of stuff happening in the church. And he says, for this reason, 1 Corinthians 11, 30 through 32, for this reason, many of you are sick, weak, and asleep. And asleep didn't mean that they fell asleep in church. It means they died prematurely. Why? They wouldn't judge themselves concerning sin. That's right. And Go they ahead. didn't discern the Lord's body. Go ahead, brother. So, you, you know, when you sin, even little, a little thing, amen, you've you got to confess. Don't be like out on the head. If you want to keep a tender heart before God, deal with little things, amen? Yes. Little yes. things. You, listen, you know when you sin, your heart condemns you, the Bible says. Yes. First John, the third chapter, tells you your heart condemns you. You don't have confidence because you sin. Don't override that. Just go right to God and say, God, like the pastor before, come boldly before the throne of grace. Yes. And say, Lord, forgive me. I, I, I sinned. Yes. Forgive me. I got bad with my wife or I spoke harsh to or my husband or, this, or whatever it is. Yeah? You know, we, we, we all miss it in some way sometimes. We don't mean to. Yes. I mean, the more that you mature, the less you've got to have to go to 1 John 1 9. In the beginning, sometimes you've got to go over the spot every day. Because yeah? <laughs> you can't. You're a baby. Amen. You know, babies do poopies in their in 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 uh, pampers, you know, all the time. you got to change them. But eventually you grow up, amen? Yeah. You don't wear pampers anymore. So, all right, so these are, these are the other signs. Uh, then go over to uh, uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter. I mentioned to you the storms. I gave you some scripture references. Here's another reference. Revelation 12 chapter. See, he, Jesus said, when you see all these, all these signs, all these things happening, your redemption draws nigh. Yes. No, no, He's in, no. and, and he said, Luke, one of, he said, look up here. Your redemption is yes. nigh. Uh, Luke the, the uh, 12 chapter, verse 11. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love yes. their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Notice what, what did he say? The earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. Why would he mention the earth and the sea? Because in the, in the, in the sea, the waves are roaring. Amen? The storms, the hurricanes. And by the way, we have authority over this stuff. Yes. Amen. 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 We were in Alabama for six months, and Alabama is notorious for uh, uh, tornadoes. And, you know, we live in a motorhome. And every time they said one was coming our way, I took authority over that. I said, we're going to have one here. I took authority over Pelham, Alabama, uh, over the Prince of the Power of the Air, and Shelby County. That's the county I was in. Mm -hmm. See, because we have authority where we're at. Amen? Yes. Yeah, we can't exercise authority all over us, but, but we have authority where you're at. Amen? Amen. And I take authority and find out mine. I, I practice it. My, my wife will tell you. I mean, I, must, I'm, I think maybe some weathermen lost their job because of me. <laughs> because they predicted one thing and the, the, the different thing happened. Because we have authority over there. Yes. But see, people don't have faith in that because you hardly ever hear somebody preaching about those things. But Jesus had authority over the weather. He exercised it too. Yes. And he's the one that said in John 14, 12, He that believeth not me in the works that I do, so he also do. Yes. Praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, he expected the disciples. But you know, Jesus was tired in ministry. You know? Yes. You know? And he was in all day. They had a carry on, on, on his boat. Him, he said, We're going on the other side. And he fell asleep. He was so soundly asleep because he was so tired that this storm, this great tempest arose all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Now, these disciples knew how to read the signs of the weather. They had the fishermen. <coughs> this was demonic. The devil was trying to kill them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he got up and rebuked the storm. <laughs> and he said, Why are you of such a little thing? Then was he expected them to, do, to do what he did. Yes. So, if those disciples who don't, didn't know as much as we know now didn't have the best of the Holy Spirit at that point could, could have done that, how much more can we do? Yes, go ahead. Why are we doing it? Why are we tolerating the stuff that the devil is doing? Go ahead, well, we right. have authority in this earth. And God said, wherever you bind under the bound in heaven, wherever I do it, so I have to loosen heaven. Yes. Amen. Why are we tolerating this stuff? Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. Because a lot of times it's not being preached. Yeah. And faith comes by hearing. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And when he boldly proclaims it, he faith in people's hearts and they wake up to find out who they are. We're not victims. That's right. We're more than conquerors. Amen. The devil is a defeated one. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Time, many, this is many years ago now. Many, many years ago. I was going to say like a, a year or two. And I talked to this guy, John Hinston, and he said to me, I feel like the devil's 
bigger than God or something like that. I, I, I almost punched him. I almost whacked him. When he said that. <laughs> I, I was only saved like a year or so, so you know, understand. <laughs> but it made me so mad he said that. And that was the, the defeated Jesus stripped him bare. He got Amen. nothing. Yeah. All he did was try to lie to you. We got all the power. Amen. Jesus Amen. said so in Luke 10, 9. He said, Behold, I give you power to do what? To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Right. Not some of all the power. Right. And nothing shall bind me in church. Right. That means you don't got to walk around in fear. Yes, you go ahead. Yeah, you know, think about Moses. Moses walked into, into, Pharaoh's, into Pharaoh's court, man. I mean, this is a guy. This guy could have just taken you out. He could just give him the word that was in Gaza and executed you. And he walked in there, amen, and did what he did. Not once, not once, ten different times. <laughs> amen. <laughs> That's pretty bold. If Moses can do that, who had a lesson coming, how much more can we do? Yes. We got a better covenant with greater promises. Amen. Uh, amen. We're filled with the Holy Ghost. That's Holy right. Ghost has the anointing upon him. We got it upon yes. us and in us. Yes. Amen. 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 Time to rise up. Amen. Amen. Let God arise in you and your enemies be scattered. Yeah. We're talking about what the devil is doing. Start to claim what God has done for you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm proving myself happy. Glory to God. Amen. And I haven't gotten the best part of my message yet. <laughs> All right. So here. Again, he says here, Woe to the inhabitants and the sea, for the devil's come down. Of you with great wrath. That's why we're seeing the storms. But we don't have to tolerate them. Yes. Amen. All right. So let's go over to uh, the book of First Timothy, the fourth chapter. The other, the other sign is the, the apostasy. I briefly touched on that. There's an apostasy taking place. Yes. People are falling away from God. Even ministers. Yeah. I've given you a couple of examples. Prominent ministers. How they falling away. Because see, your, your gift will not keep you. Uh -huh. This is where some ministers make mistakes. They, they, they get to a certain level of prominence. You know, they got all kinds of open doors, kind of finally come to the mission, and they think they don't need to spend time with God anymore. Well, listen, we, we need God when we're broke, yep. and we need God when we're filthy rich. Go ahead, amen? Brother, I try. You yeah. always need God. And to think that you get to a place in life that you don't need God is a great mistake. That's what the Laodicean church did. Yep, go ahead. Amen. No, we always need God. I am dependent on God. I'm nothing without Him. Glory to God. Amen. He is my everything. Yeah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. He's number one. I love my wife. I love my kids. But they're not number one. That's right. God number one. She's number two. My kids are number three. Yeah. That's the divine order. Yes. Yes. Yep. And it'll always be that way. And I don't expect to be her number one either. I expect her to love God first. Amen. With all her heart, all her soul, all her strength. Yes. Now it says, First uh, Timothy 4, 1, now, the Spirit expresses this, that in the latter times, that's the last days, some will depart from the faith, give it heed to, this, to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So these are teachings of devils. Yep. So they're coming right from the pulpit. Amen? Go ahead. That's why you Go can't ahead. open up your heart just to anybody. The Bible says, Go ahead. those labor among you. That's right. First Thessalonians right. 5, 9. Yes. Preacher, if you don't know about an ministry, go talk to your pastor. These, these are seasoned people, man. They know what's going on. Go talk to them. Don't go open your, yourself up to somebody. They, they, they can poison you well. That's right. Oh, go ahead. Listen, I, I know prominent ministers. Some of them have gone home to be with the Lord. I tried to warn them about Joseph Prince and what they did. And they were listening. And, that, and then they started preaching. We represented what he taught. One say, no what he said. As a matter of fact, one, if I mention maybe you probably know who he is, but I'm not. I almost fell the chair when he said that. He said, it doesn't make any difference what you do. It's all by grace, not by works. God loves you and bless you anyway. Mm -hmm. Folks, that's, that's, it does make a difference what you do. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're not saved by good works. We're supposed to maintain good works until he comes back. That's right. And if you don't maintain good works, you're not going. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah. You're not going. It says, speak, now, these are the doctrines that they taught in his day, okay? The doctrines today are different. But speaking lines and departures and having their own conscience here with the hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, 
nourishing words of faith and of a good doctrine which you have prayerfully followed. So I notice we're good ministers when we instruct the brethren on these That's things. Right. That's right. Amen. So the brethren are not deceived. Amen. So they avoid pitfalls. <clears throat> you look at the first Thessalonians, the second chapter. Uh, I'm sorry, second Thessalonians, second Thessalonians. The second chapter. It says this. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as it is from us, or the day of Christ had come. That's what they were preaching and prophesying in the day of Paul, that you know, the day of the Lord had already come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. That's the Antichrist. Notice there has to be a falling away. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That happens in mid tribulations called the abomination and desolation. Spoken by Daniel, spoken in Matthew 24 by Jesus. It says, Do you not remember that when I would uh, I was still with you, I told you these things? Now you know that what is restraining, that he may be real in his own time. What is restraining the antichrist from the power is the church. That's right. That's right. He cannot come to power until we leave. Amen. Amen. That's when the tribulation begins. That's how much of power we have here. Amen. Amen. But we're not using the fullness of that power. We need to. Amen. And we will. Because the church is leaving here glorious. Amen. Amen. Look at 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. So, what's the answer to keep people from falling away? We've got to keep preaching the word. That's right. With boldness, with signs yeah. and wonders. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. I charge you therefore before God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearance in his kingdom. Preach the word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Quit telling jokes. Huh? Preach the word. I, I, I hear some guys, they read one scripture and tell jokes and stories for the rest of the time. Nothing wrong with you, a little humor every once in a while. You know, to kind of lighten things up, particularly when you're preaching a good, strong message. Yeah. But I'm talking about these guys. One scripture, one script, the, the whole, the whole sermon. No, preach the word. Yes. Yeah. Amen. The uncompromised word of God. Yeah. Preach it the way it says. Don't water it down. Amen. 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 Don't mix a little sugar with it. Amen. And sometimes they don't rub people the wrong way. You know what? When I pastored, I was more interested in having. Quality than uh, quant uh, than, than uh, a quality than, than quantity, and sometimes people didn't want to do the work. You know what I say? There's a door. Don't want to hit you in the rear end. That's the bottom line. Amen. Amen. And people want to come to church, want to live in sin, and you find that about it. They're not married. They're living together. Amen. Know the Lord for for years, and then you said you can't live this way. You you got to get your life right. And you expose their sin, and they, they get mad, they leave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Preach you, you're a spot to blemish. You, you're, hindering, you're hindering, and for the rest of it, because you, you can grieve the Holy Spirit by your, by your, by your lifestyle. Go ahead, go now, ahead. see, some, some pastors don't want to do that. They don't want to lose the people. Anytime I lost somebody, my finances didn't go down, so then they even went up. <laughs> and God always brought in new people. Yes. Listen to me. A, 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 a tree has to be pruned. You, how many grow tomato plants? You know that they, they have an extra thing that grows in the middle. I forget what they call it. It's like a little shoot. The sucker. The sucker. You got to you got to pinch those because they, they sap the life out of the rest of the plant. That's what happens in the church. There's a purging. Yes. There's a purging. Amen. Amen. Yep. You can't be afraid of that. If you want a healthy church, there has, has to be a purging, and that's what the word does. It, yes. It, Jesus washes with the water of the word. Amen. Now, he says, preach the word, be ready in season, and out of season, convince, rebuke, and exhort. <clears throat> Ex wrote long suffering and teaching. The, the, the King James says, rebuke. Uh, I, I have a new King James. How does the King James? Reprove, reprove, rebuke, exhort. Yeah. Reprove, long rebuke, long and, and exhort. Notice it mentions twice as much as correctly that it does as saying how wonderful you are. Yes. If you've got kids, you know, that, that are young, you know how much time you spent correcting. You, you, you corrected them more than you told them how wonderful they were. Yeah. <laughs> and they needed it. 
if you want to bring them up right. And it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We're living in that time now. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up to themselves teachers. That's why people are flocking to these churches. Huh? Yeah. These, these mega churches. And I'm kind of, God's going to deal with these mega churches. You watch, you watch, you see. I'm appalled by Joel Osteen and his behavior. Went to a Lady Gaga concert. Not too long ago, where they were celebrating LBGT, did photo ops there. Hello. And now he's marching with Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Hello. Antifa just just was uh, marked a terrorist group, and they are. They're the ones that are behind all this stuff, right. funded by George Soros. Right. They want they, they they want to bring down the president. They want to ruin the economy. It's all about power, folks. Right. Amen. Right. I, I can go into that whole thing about the coronavirus and all this stuff and what they're doing, how they're manipulating people and the stuff right. they're doing. Right. There's so much information out there that's true information. Yeah. And you have to find out what's going on. Amen. Amen. Because there's a lot of the stuff. Well, in the last day, there's a war going on. Yes. <laughs> yes. It says, so the time will come when they will not do a sound record, but according to their own desires, because they have itchy ears, they will heap up to themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned up beside the fables. But you be watchful on all things, endure affliction, do not work, and do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. All right. So then go to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And let's get to the part that I want to get to here about the coming restoration. This is going to. I'll tell you, if you don't get to shout when we get to this part here, your wood's wet. Amen. <laughs> Check your pulse. Because I'm going to tell you, it's not going to end the way it looks. That's, right. Amen. That's what the Holy Ghost said through tongue interpretation earlier. Yes. Yes. Now, in uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, Verse 25 through 27. Husband, love your wife, sisters, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he may sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the word by the word. That's why you have to be in a church that teaches the word, like this one. Because we're sanctified, we're set apart by the word. Yes. The word removes us. Sanctify means to be set apart. Yes. The word removes you from carnality, from the world, amen? Yes. Unto yes. God. Yes. If, if you heed it, if yes. you obey it. Yes. So if you go to a place they don't teach the word, amen, and and, and they okay, you know, uh, these practices that we've mentioned before, uh, you're not going to be sanctified. Go ahead. And it says, that he might present her to himself a glorious church. Notice the glorious. glorious. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Spots and wrinkles are people that know the word and aren't doing it. Mm -hmm. They need to be removed. Yes. They don't repent. Yes. And that he sh and she should be holy without blemish. Okay? So I want you to know Jesus coming back what? For a glorious church. Yes. That he may present it to himself. That's the rapture of the church. Yes. So we're not leaving here with our heads tucked be, be Go ahead. between our tails Go ahead, brother. defeated. Mm -hmm. We're leaving here glorious. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, there's two types of glory that the mention mentions, the yep. Bible mentions. One is the Shekinah glory. Yes. Yes. The other one is the glory of wealth. And they are both coming into the kingdom. Yes, thank you. God that to you. Let me prove that to you. Go to 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter. Now, this is going to get good now. Yeah. Think you're going to go wrong, but this is going to be good. <laughs> because good things are coming our way. Yes. Yeah. Amen. God wants you to get your expect expectancy up. Yes. Because there's a coming restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God's going to restore stuff in your life. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah. If you're walking with God, yes. amen? See, some of us have been believing God for things for a long time that they haven't manifested yet. Don't let go of your faith because yes. it's coming. Yes. It's amen. coming. Yes. I'm sure you're going God. Yes. Second Chronicles 7, chapter, starting with verse 1. When some had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. Now listen to me. If we want the fire of God to come... <laughs> And we, and we need, listen, the only thing, I have a message entitled, The Only same Thing Will Save America. Yes. I preach that right after President, either right before or right after President Trump uh, came into office. And it's fervent prayer. Yes. We need to have people fervently praying. Yes. 
in the Holy Ghost particularly. Because we do not know how to pray for as we ought. Romans yes. 8, 26, 28. Yes. But the Holy Spirit gives utterances. Yes. We need to get to a place of travailing prayer. Yes. Galatians 4, 19, the Apostle Paul said, My Lord spoke of whom I travail and birth again until Christ. He fervently prayed yes. like a woman given birth, where you begin to groan in the Spirit. Amen? Yes. Because you yield to the Holy Ghost. Yes. yes. And, that, and that yearning and that desire, amen, like a woman has to, to you know, give birth to that baby. You want to give birth to that which God wants to birth upon this earth. Yes. Yes. We used to have that kind of prayer in the 80s. Yes. There was a great emphasis on, on intercession. And then and some people got squirrely. Yes. And, and, and that's what the devil does. You know, he, he, God has emphasized that some people get squirrely. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And, and so pastors started, you know, shutting it down because of the squirrels. <laughs> Amen. We don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> Amen. And get, get rid of the squirrels. And that, we need that kind of praying, folks. And we need to have prayer meetings where we're praying in the Holy Ghost, Amen. fervently, giving birth to the things that God wants to do on this earth. My wife and I dedicate time almost just about every day, sometimes, to pray. We've been in this act of praying. Amen. Praise Not God. just for the service, for our country, for the world. We yes. took that, she took that globe down, put it over here. We're praying for the world. Amen. For revival to come to the world. Praise God. Yes. Amen. I want to see God move. Sweep through the world because, well, yeah, there's an apostasy, but on the other on the other side of the coin, there's going to be a great harvest of souls. Glory to God. Amen. 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 And the last will be first, yes. and the first will be last. Yes. yes, some people are going to fall away because they, they they won't heed, they won't take correction, they won't hear what the Spirit of God's saying. Uh -huh. Go ahead. But there are those that are going to be swept in with this move of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. And it's coming. That's close. Amen. I actually believe it's here already. Yes. We just haven't seen the fullness of it yet. That's right. It's like a, a like a tsunami starting to build up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. There's a tsunami of God's power that's coming. Yes. Before yes. Oral Roberts went home to be with the Lord, Jerry Savell said to him, Oral, wait, what's God showing you? He said, God told me, he said, Oral, the, the miracles that you saw in the big tent are nothing compared to what's coming. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. you go and look at the miracles that Oral Roberts, yeah. God did for Oral Roberts. Tremendous miracle. Yes. You go on YouTube and see some of his meetings and stuff. Yes. He said that nothing compared to what's coming. Yes. That's in the Bible. Yes. I'll show it to you. Yes. It says, when Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. So if we want to see the power of God, we have to have fervent prayer. Yes. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord in the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground and the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good for his birth and good forever. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that the people will be volunteers in the day of good power. Yes. When the power of God comes, man, I've seen it many, many times. Many, many times. Uh, in, in Mexico, I was in Mexico ministering some years back, and grown men would come up to the front. Remember that? And they, they would be shaking the power and crying. I mean, these are grown men. And you got to say, Latin, Latin, Latin men have a lot of machismo in them. Not a problem, amen? And these guys, I mean, they came weeping like little babies because of the power of God that was back. That's what we need. Yes. Amen? Yes. We need the power of God. God, show us your glory. Glory. And I'm yes. God to come into this. Right. God, yes. The glory of God come into this place. Yes. And yes. And touch your life. It you you, you won't be the same because we need that. Yes. Yes. We need, I'm, 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 I, I don't want to just church service. I want the power to come and touch people's lives. Amen. We yes. need that. Yes. And God wants to. Yes. But we need to pray. Amen. We that listen to me. We that are right with God and understand these things and want to obey God, we need to be the catalyst. Yes. We need the ones that lay our lives down for the others and for the lukewarm, for the unsaved. Amen. Yes. And if we don't do it, it's not going to happen because we're co laborers of God. Yes. Look at the Second Chronicles, the fifth chapter. So this is one kind of glory when it comes in as a cloud. Second, Second Chronicles, the fifth chapter, starting with verse 11. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the most holy place where all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions. And the Levites who were with the singers, all those of Asaph and Heman and Jedison, with their sons and their brethren stood at the east and of the altar clothed in white linen, having cymbals, strings, instruments, and harps, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets, 
And indeed, it came to pass when the trumpets and singers were as one. If we want to move God, we, we have to have unity. Amen? Yeah. We can't allow strife Go ahead. in our marriages. We can't allow strife in our churches. This is, look, the Bible says, where there's envy and strife. Yes. I think it's James 119. Yeah. Where there's envy and strife, there's confusion and every evil thing. That's right. But Psalm, uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm 133 says, How good and how pleasant it is when the brethren are in unity. Yes. In the book of Isaiah, it says, The new wine is in the cluster. I think it's Isaiah 65, 66. The new wine is in the cluster. Uh -huh. Amen. Thank you. We have to have unity. You read the first five chapters of the book of Acts, and you'll find the word one aboard mentioned about five or six times. And every time you do it, you see the power of God manifest. Yes. We can't allow strife. You can't allow people to come to the church and start bad mouthing the pastor. Start, you know, you need to address that as a, as, as a church member and say, "Hey, brother, you know, we, we don't do that here. We don't talk about the pastor. We pray for the pastor." Okay, nobody's perfect here, and so you know we don't talk. And, and if they don't listen to you and they keep doing it, they get somebody spiritual to go with you, and you two of you talk to them. Yes. And if they continue to do that, and so this brother, then you bring the pastor's attention, and he'll deal with it. Hey, that's how you keep the church healthy. Listen, I practice oh, yeah, that in my right. church. That's why we had to move God constantly. Amen. Because we talk these things. We pray and we talk to people. We, 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 we protect what we have. Yes. Amen. Yes. We protect the, the, the presence of God in our, in our church. Amen. Because we're nothing without his presence. Yes, that's right. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 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 Look at the... All right, so... So it says, uh, verse uh, 13. And then it came to pass that when the trumpets and singers were one to make one sound to be heard and praise and thank the Lord, when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, his mercy and good forever, that the house of God, the Lord was filled with a cloud. That's the glory, the Shekinah glory. Yes. So that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Yes. So that's one time of glory. But there's another type of glory found in 2 Chronicles, the ninth chapter. And that's the glory of wealth. That's the glory of wealth. 2 Chronicles, the ninth chapter, verse 1 through 10. Now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, now this woman was filthy rich. She came to Jerusalem to test Solomon with hard questions, having a very great retinue, camels and more spices, gold. That just means she had a caravan. And golden abundance and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions, and there was nothing difficult for Solomon that he could not explain to her. When the Queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built. Now, I don't have time. Like I said, it would take me four days at least. But go back and read First Chronicles around the 30th chapter when they were building that temple and the kind of wealth that was invested in just, just by David alone. And, 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 and others. Um, <clears throat> and when the Queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of the Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seat of his servants, the servants the servant of his waiters, and their apparel, his cupbearers, and their apparel, his entryway, and when she went to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. What does that mean? She fainted. She passed out. Because of the glory of, of the wealth that, 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 that Solomon had. Somebody said, well, what does that have to do with us? Hang on to your seatbelt. <laughs> then she said to the king it was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom however I did not believe their words until I came and saw with my own eyes and indeed half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told me you exceed the fame of which I heard happy are your men and happy are your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom blessed be the Lord your God who delighted in you and sent you on his throne to be king for the Lord of your God because your God has loved Israel to establish it forever Therefore he made you king over them to do justice and righteousness. And she gave the king of 120 talents of gold, spices in great abundance, and precious stones. And there were never were any spices such as those the queen of Sheba gave to Solomon, and also the servants of Hiram and the servants of Solomon, who brought gold from Ophir and brought album, wood, and precious stones. So she, she I mean, 